Okay, here's the Foxworks receiver and it's actually quite clearly um, labelled. So the power goes to J5 and then we have four servo connections. Servo 4, 3, 2, 1. Servo 1, that is where the steam regulator is going to go. And servo 3, that is where the two um, servos for the power bogies are going to connect up and servo 4 that is for the steam whistle so we can start attaching some of this stuff okay what we can now do we can start connecting um, some of these cables because we know what they are and you see here there's the battery this is the battery cable because it's come off the power switch and we need to have black nearest the printer board. So that goes in there like that. Okay, the next one that I want to do, I want to find out which one of these is for the steam regulator and which one powers the servo for the power bogey at the other end. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put one of them onto servo number one, again with black down like this just out of force of habit like that and we'll leave that like that for the moment i'm not going to connect anything else what i'm now going to do is put some batteries in and see what happens when i turn servo one on so let's uh, do that okay this uh, this whole process is actually split into two things there's actually connecting up the hardware and then that's the, the second step is configuring the receiver and the transmitter together with the servos. They're configuring their movement. The first thing is actually to bind this receiver with the transmitter. And how you do that is you turn on the receiver. Let's turn on the receiver. Okay, we get a flashing red light. And then what we have to do then is hold down one and three and turn the transmitter on. Okay, now we release. Okay, so here we go. If I move S1, and you see that the power buggy moves. So that means that the incorrect servo cable is attached to the receiver. So we'll attach the other one and see what happens. So first things first, turn off the receiver, turn off the transmitter, and we're going to change the cable. Battery is fine, this one comes off, and then we need the other one. This one comes off, and we need the other one, which is this guy. Let's connect this guy onto servo one. Black like mat downstairs, let's have a look. Okay. And this time it's actually the steam regulator that's moving. Let's have a look. I'll show you. Okay, I'm moving the... Okay, so this is the steam regulator. This is what we're looking for. Okay, so that's connected correctly. Let's move on. Okay, let's turn it off again. Just to be safe. Okay, so let's bring in the splitter. And this is going to go to servo connection number three. So let's have a go at that. Put this guy in, server connection number three is that guy there. Yep. Done. So what we'll do, we'll just put this one in this guy now. Like so. Oh. There's that one. And then we need to put a reverse it in between like this and then the cable from the actual reverser goes in this way around that's theory let's see if it works 
Transmitter power on. Receiver power on. Yep, it's binding and let's see what happens. Okay, it works. Let me see if I can show you with the camera. Just keep an eye on the radius arm there and there. Let's see what happens when I press the buttons. They go in opposite directions. And back, other direction. There we go. Works, great, that's done. Happy. Okay, now, now we're going to um, attach the servo that's controlling the steam whistle. A couple of things here. It's quite short. And secondly, it's a custom setup uh, that Tom's put in. And there's a chance that if I just connect it and try, it is a simple on off. And there's a chance without actually calibrating the movement in the servo that it might either go in the wrong direction or it might just go too far and strain the setup. So I'm not actually going to test it. I'm going to connect it up and then I'm going to configure the movement of the servo before actually doing a full test. To make sure that I don't strain the mechanism. Just another thing about configuring the movement of the, the swing, if you like, the, of the servo movement. I'm not going to show that in detail here. It's quite a complicated thing. And to be quite honest, I don't think I've got the, the video know-how on to do that. And what I'll do, I'll put a link in the description um, to a video from Fossworks that explains much better than I can how you go about configuring uh, the servo movement of each of the servos, if you like. So I'm going to be doing that off camera. I've got the camera zoomed in a bit on the one of the power bogies. What we're going to do now is calibrate the movement swing for the servos um, that govern the movement of this radio arm to select reverse or forward gear or indeed neutral. The idea is at the ends anyway, you don't want this radius arm um, pushing up against the end of the slot under pressure because that's going to ruin the servos in the end. So you just want to, and it's also going to cause a bit of binding maybe. So what you want is that, yes, you want the movement and yes, it needs to go as far as it can, but not on, on any strain to the radius arm uh, concerning the movement in this slot. So it needs, to, it needs to be a movement and just just a tad back. So we're going to do that now. Okay, so here we are. I'm, I'm adjusting um, the position now to... Uh, that is too much. And you can hear the servo straining. And now you don't hear the servo straining. And it is in the upright position, but there's just a tad of movement left in the slot. So we'll just leave it like that. We'll save that. Okay, now we're going to the mid position. About there. Probably about in the middle of where this uh, this this metal is here is probably about right for the mid position we'll save that and the other extreme is right down here again there's too much pressure on and you can hear the servo straining and now it's not straining and it's just off the base of that slot so that's fine we'll leave it like that and we'll save that and that should be okay let's have a look let's get out of the calibration mode okay let's put it back on let's have a look transmitter receiver and let's move let's see what we got it's in neutral at the moment brilliant i'm happy with that of course, the, obviously, the, the, the real test will be out on a steam, on a live steam, 
but we'll do that uh, in the near future. So that's uh, we've got all that tested now. Let's turn the system off. As far as I'm concerned, the question now is getting all of the gubbins back into the front part of the garret nice and tidily. So let's have a look at that. So the first thing to do to sort this mess out, I think, is to fix the receiver back to the base plate. And I've got some double-sided tape, so we'll put that on. That will stop it moving around. You don't want electrical connection points moving around. See, we can sort that out. I think this is going to be one of the jobs that's going to be quite difficult to sort out on the camera. So I might have to do it something like that. My heads might, might be in the way. That's what I'm talking about, really. So let's see if I can get this all the way down there. And then we need to keeping this out the rest has got to go in here somehow so let's have a look see if we can sort this out I don't think I'll be putting it back as tidily as it was before as long as they don't get in the way of the movement of the server underneath there I think well and then we've got this one over for uh, the power I'm all right with that the battery box I think we'll leave it like that for now cut him off and we'll try and see if the base plate can go on and then we'll give it a go all right what we'll do we'll try and uh, put some screws on here now Okay, when this cable is deliberately so long, so you can easily switch your batteries around. So, well, give this a quick go. This we're going to go in there like that, and for the time being, it's going to be like that. And then, bingo, we're done. Next stage is a steam test.